Today we're getting into the latest Tesla news, including the latest leaked features for Tesla's new cars, how tax credits could be changing soon, and more. So let's get into it, and a special thanks to Keeps for sponsoring a portion of this video. First up today, Tesla is working on rolling out fixes to some small but long-standing issues that have troubled their cars for a few years. First, Tesla just started deliveries of a newly updated steering yoke that brings some pretty solid improvements. Tesla first introduced the yoke back in 2021 as part of the refreshed Model S and X, and it was a very controversial move at the time. On release, it was a mandatory feature of those cars, but customer criticism prompted Tesla to eventually bring back the wheel, with the yoke now being optional. The yoke definitely took some getting used to, but over the years, it still has fans. One of the biggest complaints about the original yoke design was that Tesla moved the car's horn out of the center to be on a side button controlled by your thumb. In theory, this is the kind of thing that would make it quicker to use in the case of an emergency. It's literally at your fingertips, but in reality, it just caused problems for most drivers. For a lot of drivers, hitting the horn in the center is an ingrained bit of muscle memory that would take a lot of thought to undo. Usually the main times you need a horn are in emergencies, alerting somebody of a potential collision, for example, and you need to be able to hit that without any second thought. Also, if the wheel is turned over, hitting the horn is that much more difficult. As such, in this new redesign, Tesla has moved the horn back to the center. It also comes with some general improvements to build quality and the addition of more stitching. That should hopefully fix the peeling issue that this had at launch. The yoke is currently available on the Model S and X for an additional $1,000. In addition, Tesla will soon be rolling out new improvements to one of their most criticized features, auto wipers. For years, Teslas have had problems with their auto wipers coming on at inappropriate times or otherwise not wiping at all when they are needed. The cars currently use a system of cameras to determine when and at what speed the windshield wipers need to be activated, with the goal of eventually removing the need for human control to your wipers. When your car is operating an autopilot, automatic wipers are mandatory, leading to some frustrating moments for drivers where they don't operate correctly. A Tesla engineer recently posted on X that a quote, new improvement should go out soon. So hopefully that manages to clear up these last remaining annoyances, but we'll see. Tesla is constantly working to improve their cars for their customers. It's always great to see them address these criticisms head on because at the end of the day, it's all in service of building a better driving experience. Next up today, a new Tesla feature has leaked again, and it's pretty exciting for one specific product. Now that the Model 3 has officially been refreshed in all markets and is shipping in all markets, the performance version still remains to be seen. In the past year, we've seen leaks through Tesla's parts catalog and other sources that they are working on an upgraded performance Model 3 that will stand out quite a bit from the previous one. First, it looks to be plaid or potentially ludicrous with its badging on the back, which should be a significant step up over previous years. Then we heard from sources that this would be something pretty special. Martin Viecha, Tesla's head of investor relations, confirmed that this car is on the way in a tweet, and then rumors from China indicated that this would indeed be a tri-motor powertrain. This has come into a bit of question, especially as Tesla doesn't want to hurt sales of the tri-motor Model S Plaid, but some of that is unavoidable with the latest refresh. Leaked in Tesla's app, we saw updated front seats for a special sport trim of the Model 3, and this would mark the first time this car would truly be getting a noticeable interior upgrade for the performance model. Previously, seats like these leaked for the Model S Plaid, set to come in the future, but here they leaked for the Model 3. Then they were spotted on a prototype Model 3. It wasn't the best photo, but it did match the plaid seats that we saw, seemingly with a ludicrous badge instead, but this week we finally got a great look at this car in the wild. A covered up Model 3 refresh was spotted supercharging in Santa Monica, and on the side it says, engineering vehicle. This clearly shows us that something is different on the front bumper, because Tesla would have no other reason to cover up a car that they are now shipping. You can see that front bumper a little better here, but it's still hard to tell what all is different. This render gives an idea of what the front bumper may look like in practice. More noticeable than that though is the front seats. Up front, this absolutely features those updated sport seats, but in white. In white, they look pretty great, and it's interesting to note here as well that the rear of this car is covered. They could be doing this to avoid drawing attention exclusively to the front bumper, or there could be changes there as well that we aren't expecting. These seats appear to match these leaked plaid sport seats exactly, except of course that they are in white, so I'm really curious to know if they have different badges on them. One thing you can notice though when zooming in this photo is that the passenger seat already has some wrinkles, so hopefully this will get addressed before it comes to market. As for the wheels, these are the 19 inch sport wheels from the previous Model 3, so I don't think that these are the actual wheels we'll see on this car. The parts catalog points to a very different wheel here, but I imagine again, Tesla isn't out in the wild with these on purpose. For those new seats, I imagine we could see Tesla introduce the Performance Model 3, complete with upgraded sport interior alongside an upgraded Model S Plaid with sport interior. They're always trying to strike a balance there and not drive sales away from the Plaid, so I'm curious what all this may bring. 
The software is rumored to be tuned especially for the sport trim as well, but that could simply relate to things like track mode and launch mode. I personally hope there are more changes to the interior, but even with the upgraded seats, altered front, and potentially rear, it could help this trim stand out in a way we haven't seen from Tesla before. I'll be sure to keep you posted when we hear more about the Performance Model 3. Next up today, Keeps is an online subscription service that makes it easy and more affordable for men to treat their male pattern baldness from the comfort of their home. It's the product I wish I had known about a few years ago when I first noticed signs of hair loss. Eventually, I just had to embrace the fact that it was gone, but you don't have to. Keeps offers treatments that are clinically proven to work, including both the FDA-approved hair loss treatment options. They also offer a super easy to use two-in-one gel that combines both. Treatments offered by Keeps are 90% effective at treating hair loss and can increase hair growth by up to 35% according to clinical studies. In addition to clinically approved treatments, Keeps offers hair thickening shampoo, conditioner, and styling pomade. Nearly 1 million men have saved their hair with Keeps and over 4,500 have rated it five stars. So whether you're looking to prevent hair loss, stimulate hair growth, or just take better care of what you have, Keeps has you covered with their trusted line of products. Most customers notice results within six months of starting treatment. Hair loss stops with Keeps. For a special offer to get started, go to keeps.com slash Ryan Shaw or click the link in the description below. You don't have to end up like me. Next up today, some big changes could be in store in the near future for EV tax credits, potentially making Teslas and other EVs more expensive to buy. The Biden administration has put in a lot of effort to make EVs front and center, but this proposal for yearly EV requirements may soon be walked back due to political pressures and pushback from automakers. Quote, both automakers and United Auto Workers have urged the government to slow down the EV ramp up, saying the technology is too expensive for the mainstream US consumer and that the country needs more time to adapt and develop charging infrastructure. The EPA proposed strict limits on tailpipe emissions recently, requiring 67% of new cars and light-duty trucks to be electric by 2030, up from 7.6% in 2023. But sources say they are tweaking this plan to slow the pace. This comes in response to automakers, how hard it is to scale EVs, and political pressures, among other things. While the $7,500 federal tax credit is great and has improved this year to be available at the point of sale, the number of vehicles eligible was cut to 13 at the beginning of this year due to battery sourcing requirements. Others in this election have talked about cutting these credits altogether, so this requirement reduction would make it so that serious sales of EVs are not really required until 2030. Then what we'll see going forward is what this will mean across the board. Regardless of politics in 2024 and 2025, some changes are likely to occur here because the main automakers in the US don't really want to go to EVs as quickly as previously thought. It's a difficult process, and instead we are seeing companies like Ford and GM bring back some hybrid options. Soon, if EV tax credits remain exactly as they are, it could turn into a huge advantage for Tesla since they would be one of the only automakers making qualifying EVs at scale. They get a $7,500 discount from the government for qualifying customers in order to compete with companies like GM and Ford who continue making gasoline vehicles. That wouldn't make these large automakers too happy, especially with Tesla being non-union. That's a lot of speculation there, but one piece that does always seem to be there is this. If you qualify for the tax credit today and are ready to buy an EV, it's probably the right time to buy. The Model Y fully qualifies, and while the refreshed Model Y should be coming in the somewhat near future, Tesla has said it won't be coming this year. Come 2025, it could be a totally different situation when it comes to tax credits. They are always in flux. In the meantime, it will be very interesting to watch. We've seen a lot of promises, but the only US automakers actually scaling up EVs in a meaningful way are Tesla and potentially Rivian. Arguably, the biggest impact will come once Tesla releases their next-gen EV and Rivian releases their R2. So I'm curious to see how tax credit changes may affect those vehicle launches. Next up today, LG has made a big announcement that should have a big impact for Tesla's products going forward. Back in 2020, Tesla held a battery day and announced their big plans for their new 4680 battery cells. These were supposed to bring a lot of advantages, but as often happens with new tech like this, it has taken some time to come to fruition. They briefly shipped a standard range Model Y out of Giga Texas with 4680 cells, but now they are exclusively used in the Cybertruck. They plan to ramp up internally, but in addition to using suppliers for their other battery cell types, Tesla is going to use LG for their 4680 cells. 
The CEO of LG Energy Solutions told the press that they are expected to begin production as early as August of this year. To begin with, the cells will come from their factory in South Korea, but they have plans to bring production to the US. They are currently working on building a factory in Arizona, which could be helpful to ensure that cars that use these batteries are eligible for the EV tax credit here. While LG ES is partnered with Tesla, they are also in negotiations with other customers to become prospective customers. The company has toyed with producing the 4680 battery cell out of their factory in China, which does open up plenty of speculation as to what cars may adopt it. It's interesting to imagine how many other automakers might end up using the very same batteries as Tesla. That already happens today, but 4680s were something that Tesla mostly brought to market. Meanwhile, Tesla has been working to increase their own internal 4680 production capacity. They announced back in October that Giga Texas built the company's 20 millionth 4680 battery cell. Elon went on to say in their most recent earnings call that they can expect 2024 to be a big year for the internal ramping of that cell. While they will be expanding their own production, he wanted to reiterate that this production is not meant to replace their suppliers, but rather supplement them. Tesla is expecting major growth in their car sales and production, including the introduction of a whole new mass market EV model, and as such, they'll need a lot of battery production. There's a lot of logistics that comes with expanding their EV output, and with all their ramping of battery production and partnerships, they seem well poised to make it happen. What I'm most curious to see is where these cells get used for Tesla. Will they be used to ramp Cybertruck production? Will the 4680 Model Y with structural battery pack make a return or finally replace the 2170 cell version? Or will these be a piece of the next gen Tesla that should be coming by the end of 2025 according to Tesla's latest timeline? Time will tell. I wouldn't be surprised if the Cybertruck and next gen Tesla are where these LG 4680s get used most. Next up today, leaked information from Rivian has given us a look into their upcoming NACS integration and how it should work for all companies utilizing Tesla superchargers. Rivian released an update for their app, and data miners were quick to look through the code. Inside, they uncovered an animation that demonstrated the operation of Rivian's upcoming NACS adapter. While the operation is about what you'd expect, the design is very interesting in that it is nearly identical to the adapter design coming from Ford. Perhaps they are sharing adapter designs or they are coming from the same supplier. Based on what we can see in this design, the adapter does not contain the pins in the CCS connector that would allow for AC charging. Without these pins, this adapter would only be good for DC fast charging, such as Tesla supercharger network. For most people, this should be fine, as fast charging is the primary source that you want while out traveling, but other options are always nice to have. So if you wanted to plug in your Rivian at one of Tesla's destination chargers at somewhere like a hotel, you could not do it with this adapter and you need a different one. This is confirmed later in the app's data, which only mentions DC fast charging. Another feature mentioned in the app is plug and play on Tesla superchargers, a feature that, as the name suggests, allows you to plug in your car to begin charging with no other steps. This feature isn't available on many non-Tesla vehicles, and the current system is not the smoothest. When you pull into a supercharger with a magic dock, you have to first manually select the charging stall in the app to begin charging. The app's data does tell us that you will be able to handle all functions through the Rivian app. That's good for Rivian owners, since you won't have to manage a separate app for supercharging. Hopefully they have been able to work out a convenient supercharging arrangement for Rivian owners that will make charging these cars just as easy as it is to charge a Tesla. The easy supercharging experience is one of the best parts of owning a Tesla, and it would be great for other car owners to have the same user experience. We'll see if other automakers can do what Rivian looks like they're doing here. Last up today, some updates from other automakers. Hyundai seems to be launching a new pickup truck set to take on the F-150 Lightning, the Ioniq T10. They recently filed a trademark in Australia classified under automobiles, electric cars, trucks, lorries, and sport utility vehicles. Back in June, they unveiled a new EV platform that could handle a vehicle larger than an SUV, so we've been expecting a truck to be announced. Hyundai's sister company, Kia, is officially planning to launch two electric trucks, so it makes sense that Hyundai would make one on the same platform. Electrek also speculates the T in the name could signify a truck. Reportedly, they have also filed a trademark for an Ionic T7, which could be a variation of the T10 and maybe a smaller truck. Overall, Hyundai is leading the pack in EVs, at least among legacy automakers, so it's great to see them committing to their strategy by releasing a wider range of electric vehicles. I hope they're planning to release these models in the US. BMW has just released their i5 electric wagon, but it won't be coming to the US. It'll be sold alongside a gas-powered BMW 5 Series in Europe, and BMW has confirmed neither of these vehicles will be released in North America. Customers in Europe, though, can enjoy 60 cubic feet of storage space with the rear seats folded down, up to 340 horsepower in the base E-Drive 40 model, and a 0-62 miles per hour in 6.1 seconds. 
The i5 M60 X drive trim has a top horsepower of 601 and zero to 62 miles per hour in 3.9 seconds. Top speed also increased from 120 miles per hour to 143 miles per hour. The E drive 40 trim will get between 300 and 348 miles of WLTP range, while the M60 will get between 276 and 314 miles of WLTP range. The car can charge at 205 kilowatts, getting from 10 to 80% charge in 30 minutes. In the US, BMW seems to be sticking with SUVs and sedans. GM has confirmed the starting price of the 2024 Chevy Equinox EV at $34,995. That comes in higher than GM's initial promise of $30,000 for a base variant, but this price would make it the most affordable EV in the US with a range over 300 miles. It's not a performance powerhouse, but the average commuter will love the range available at this price. What's especially exciting about this car is that it will be eligible for the full $7,500 federal EV tax credit. That brings the starting price of this vehicle down to just $27,495 if you qualify. That's a great deal for an EV with this kind of range, and it's taking on the Model Y with a similar range that costs just over $40,000 with the tax credit. Some of that tax credit will surely be eaten up by dealership fees, but nevertheless, it still makes this car an even more attractive option if it comes to market at this price. If GM can produce this car in great quantities while maintaining good reliability, this car would be a major contender in the EV market. That's all the latest Tesla news for today, so in the meantime, if you want to see the latest issues for the Cybertruck, and whether or not they matter, you can check out that video linked up here or in the description below. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.